I got it, I got it, I got the solution. <laughs> so we ruined our signature pond with this sand. But I think I found a solution. Hey Brian, sand is here. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Hey, how you guys all doing? It's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is Monday morning. Thanks so much for tuning in last week. And those of you that have been following us for so long, really, really, really appreciate all you guys. Wanted to give a big shout out and thank you. But like I said, it's Monday. We have so much, so much going on this week. I am working on designs for customers. In fact, there's a design sitting right here, which I'm gonna take you guys through. We are also working on yet another academy. This academy is a little bit more advanced. Ed Ballou, the pond professor, is gonna be sharing all of his tips and tricks over the last 30 years and believe it or not all of these empty seats are going to be filled and 54 total eyes will be watching everything Ed does and all the things that are coming out of his mouth to further their education. Of course while that's happening I've got to check in with progress in the retail store. Oh and look at there's Jack. Yeah. Don't want to give away too much and it's good because it's night time. What do we got planned for the rest of the week here? Good question. I really don't know what's going on. I know you have a few things going on over here that you want to mimic what we finished over there. Something going here I still don't know what's going here and I know we're gonna be doing something back there because we had to move a bunch of stuff earlier in the day so I really don't know what's going on don't worry Jack I'll let you and our viewers know soon enough but with that I'll also check in with our maintenance coordinators to tell you the progress we've made with our maintenance packages but before we get into any of that let me begin by telling you why you clicked on this video it's about the sand it's all about the sand so for so many years customers have always asked us can we do a sand beach and I've always had to say no and we tried it here at aquascape I don't know three, four years ago, and we failed miserably. It wasn't a good plan. The sand we used was a more of a mason type sand, and when it got wet, it almost turned into concrete. Well, first it was kind of like snot, and it was concrete, then it evolved into kind of this mushy, gummy mess. It's just not the right stuff. And in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking more of like that Cabo sand. And Cabo sand isn't really a great sand if you're in Cabo. It's kind of a little bit more coarse. It hurts a little bit on your feet, but if you get the right aggregate size, that stuff, it's perfect. The reason I like it is water moves moves through it really, really easy. It helps hold its shape a little bit better. If you put enough water over the top of it, you get buoyant. So it's perfect in the bottom of a pond in layers four, three inches thick. If I put it on a slope because of the coarseness of it, it's really gonna hold its shape a lot. So here's the good news. The little bit of research, I think I found the perfect sand. Unfortunately, a little bit further down south. So I've gotta send somebody down to Southern Illinois, grab us a sample, and not a sample like this. I think I'm gonna bring back a truckload, really make sure I like it. If it's exactly what we need, then high five to me, you guys, and everybody else, especially all of our future customers, because I'm gonna be designing sand beaches everywhere. So here's how I see the rest of this video working, or really this week working. It's all about the sand. I gotta figure out the sand. So there's a bunch of moving parts. The sand is way down in Southern Illinois. That's a four hour trip for us to drive down there. That means four hours back. My understanding, they don't sell to the public. They sell through distributors. So I've gotta find maybe a distributor. Hopefully there's a distributor a little closer. Who knows? Most importantly, I wanna get that sand by the end of the week. So I can show you guys either the big thumbs up or the big thumbs down. And then of course, we've got all the other stuff going on still. Stay tuned guys, let's hope we get a big thumbs up. Nobody's gonna wanna come to this event. <laughs> All right, it's about to get started. Let's pay attention. Now, everything that Aquascape does ever since day one has been modular in nature. So when we're creating something, we want to be able to scale it up or scale it down according to different design parameters. The good thing about that, it makes it very easy to understand, but it's also very easy to train. It's easy for you to train somebody and it's, it's easy for our customers to understand how it operates. So it's that same base model. Now we could just expand and contract it with a few simple modifications. Everything we do, Every single thing is designed to help you succeed. It's that symbiotic relationship I talked about. We're out there designing and building as well. We want to test all this stuff firsthand. That's our goal as part of an R&D department. We want to test things to make sure that they're going to function. And if we're going to find a problem, ideally, we're going to find it first. We also test things before they go to market and we continue to push things. And then we're also dabbling in new things all the time, working with Dave Kelly, working with Greg, working with Jeff, trying to figure out the new marketplaces and things like that.
like that, which we will also talk a little bit about later today. I remember talking about this stuff 20 years ago, 20 years ago to contractors that were starting out in this business. I mean, it, the message is the same. We have a concept and we have a model and we wanna make sure that you're successful because if you're successful with it, you're gonna end up doing more water features and I know your customers are gonna love it. But you have to be financially stable in order to pull that stuff off. Again, these numbers are not even close to what they are now. The price of everything is up. Price of labor is up. Price of shipping is up. Price of all raw materials has gone through the roof. Finding the stuff. There's even product delays on things all the time now. That wasn't uh, normal back then. So like Brian said, so how do we repeat the success? Everything went according to plan. Materials showed up, good weather, experience team, close to our office. All these things are super, super critical. And when you're talking about from a business perspective, repeatable is the key to success, which is why we do modular things. Love modular type stuff. So once you can install one of those units, you can install a thousand of them, which is the point of the discussion now, because we want to start planting these different things in your head now early on. And then as we move through the next couple days, we're going to start analyzing those different components. We'll start breaking out into the intake bays, the negative edges, and all those different things and how those things come together. Tuesday, middle of the week, kind of the beginning of the week, but I always like to check in with our maintenance coordinators, making sure that things are on track. Last week, you guys remember, we were at 78. Where are we at this point? Uh, about 116. 116. So our goal is right around 350. And when I say goal, it's not really a goal. Like one year we did 500. We got ourselves in a lot of trouble because we don't have the personnel to actually clean 500 cleanouts. If we took on every cleanout that came in, we'd be cleaning ponds well into July. And we can't do that. Middle of May, last week of May, we really want to start construction. So we have this magic number at 350. It's our cutoff. And we're probably be at 150 pretty effortlessly by the end of the week. So we're getting there. We also need to know at what point do we physically start calling our past customers. We know some of our customers tend to procrastinate a little bit. We want to give them a call, gentle reminder, sign up for your maintenance package so you can still get into that 350 group. Haley, the other thing I would love you to do so I don't have to come over here and see diamond, platinum, gold, silver customers we have. Could you take this information? Maybe Danielle can help you. But you guys take that information and transfer it over here. So when I come by, I can just see, ooh, we're at 180, we're at 200, we're at 300. Here's how many platinums, diamonds, so on and so on. The other person that's gonna appreciate this a lot is great. So I can just take a picture of the board, send it to him. He's always wanting to know that magic number. High five. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I'm excited because I actually have a plan now in my head. Jack, are you ready? I heard you were actually a little unclear on that space. Yeah, I only knew what was going on over here, so this is gonna be news to me. Before I get into that, please tell me you put the plywood on here. Yes, I did. Oh, I hear you. So if you guys can remember, there used to be, it's not used to be, it's still back there, wall block sitting back in here. We covered it with plywood. It wasn't as important as on this side as it was on the other side. The back side of this has plywood too? It will be. Oh, I can yeah, hear it. It's it does not it. on this yeah. side. Nope, right. not yet. So the back side of this, because the water level is going to be higher on this side of the wall than it is on this side of the wall, there's going to be more water pressure on this side. But we're going to put a plywood sheathing over the entire back side of this, which will help displace the weight so we don't get any buckling in this wall of any sort. So this side, as you remember, will look identical to that side over there. A countertop over here. There's a skimmer box of sorts going in over there. And our plumbing is going to discharge over here. Filters in the back. Aesthetically, now you pay attention. I will. You have to pay attention so I don't have to repeat myself. They can hit rewind if they want yeah. to. Yeah. I don't want you to hit rewind. Okay. The big thing Greg wants is more water. So we used to have a filter that went from this area all the way back into there. By taking the filter out of this space, putting it back behind the wall, we get all of this. So now the fish have so much more room. The challenge is if we put the deck back from here all the way back this way, I know, I don't think, I know fish are gonna go under here a lot. Yeah. Which I don't mind, but occasionally I have to catch fish out of here. We're gonna be are you paying attention? Yes, I am. Focus. My bad. I don't want to be trying to scoop fish out from a five foot, six foot wide deck. So what I'm thinking is instead of having this boardwalk deck that goes from one end all the way to the other, do a slightly larger deck, almost from like where you have this styrofoam sitting. From here, come out, slowly let it curve. That comes out to about here and then comes back. So the fish, yes, will be able to go underneath here. If it drives us nuts, we can put a bunch of aqua blocks back in underneath the deck to keep the fish from going all the way back in. This side, 
I just want to leave open. But I want this deck big enough that we can put a couple chairs where people can look over into the pot. This side, I'll eliminate the stairs. Okay. Take down this railing, get rid of the stairs. Let's turn this into more of a planter because I would love to bring that green element that's over there to this side as well and see some plant life kind of softening up this side of the retail area. Leaving all this to still run our plumbing chases and everything else to the filters in the back. Are you with me? Repeat it for everybody so they know that you were paying attention. So in my words. Never mind. <laughs> all right, we'll make the game day decision on we block that off with some aqua blocks or not. Yeah. I think what we'll do is the first time we can't catch a fish, we go back yeah. in there and start putting aqua blocks. Jack doesn't know about the other thing I need or Josh. I may or may not need one of you guys to run down to Wedron, Illinois to pick up a load of sand. I, found, I don't, like just type it in, okay? Right? All right. Farther than my house? Yeah, it's like south. But south. I'm south, so how far south? It's down there where the Fox River oh. kind of meets the Illinois River. So it's over yonder. Yeah, it's down there yeah. a little bit. If you guys could get it back here tomorrow or Thursday by the latest, then I can show you guys the actual difference between the screw up sand that we used before and the stuff that we've been looking for forever. That happens to be here in Illinois uh, anyways. Weird. All right, so I'm super excited about this design. This is actually for a family that has a bunch of grandchildren, but always jumped up having a pond. The second, they wanted for an area for the grandchildren to kind of play and interact, explore, learn, and so on and so on. So I'm gonna make sure I get like kind of a beachy section. They want the pond to even be more of a recreation pond. So when I think about that, I think of a bigger body of water. So the first thing I'm gonna do is transfer the Plata survey over to my graph paper. I've gone ahead and done that. So right now, this is a blank canvas. I landed this patio down here. I wanted an area, kind of a landing for the staircase. More importantly, room for an outdoor kind of seating area. Even more important than that, know they've got like grandchildren and everything else. I wanted a spot for like a couple comfy chairs and just look at the pond for the two of them. Just for the two of them. I wanted a spot to sit by the pond, feed the koi when nobody else is there, which is still probably 90% of the time. I also then drew out the pond lightly. I always draw it out lightly, so if I want to make some changes, I can make some changes really quick. We came up with about a 40 some foot pond, and then I did some stepping stones to a pathway that's gonna come to a fire pit patio that sits on the other side. So you'll go across these stepping stones. I wanna landscape a lot of this to hide the pathway, creating a little bit of mystery, and then we're gonna do a big waterfall up in here. So the big question I always get, how do I come up with the plant symbols? What are the different templates and stuff I use to draw out the pond? Really, I just use my pencil, come up with a free form shape, think about what the goals are, and then I use this a lot for just coming up with plants and stuff. So right now, I've got all my boulders drawn in, and then remember, keep your boulders to scale with the size of the drawing. On this graph paper, every square is two feet. I've got most of the boulders drawn in, so I just, you know, grab a brown, kind of come in, trace over. Now we can start drawing in the water. Right here, this is kind of cool. So they wanted that beach area for the kids. So I don't normally want a beach so close to the house. I don't want that sand carrying into the house. But because it's a walkout basement, I feel like the beach is far enough removed from the inside of the house. The other thing I've done is right next to the beach, this is all gonna be lawn. So the idea would be if you came into the beach, by the time you walked into the grass, most of that sand would have been knocked off of your feet before you tracked it all back into the house. I'm gonna do a second beach on the other side over here, which I think is gonna be really cool too. Which is so far removed from the house but closer to the fire pit. Kind of picture just more some permanent lawn chairs giving them that kind of resort feel which will look great. So I'm just kind of speckling in what I guess I would use to illustrate a beach and then maybe I'll come back over this with a little bit of tan. All right, so let's color this in. Easiest way to color it is you start with the lowest plants and then move your way up towards the taller plants. So we're gonna start with our ground cover. All right, let's go right to left. I've got uh, some perennials sitting down in here. I'm just thinking like, like hostas, just some ferns or something.
we're totally finished. Again, the main purpose I'm doing this drawing is hopefully to expand their budget a little bit more. They had a $110,000 budget. What I drew came out to 165. I've got some ways to modify this to get it closer to 140. So hopefully we can meet someplace in the middle. The main reason I wanted to put this together to show them kind of the feeling their backyard was gonna have. When it's just a big mud blank canvas, they just can't see that. And with spray paint, they got an idea of the pond space, but not the beaches and the pathways and everything else. So let me walk through verbatim what I'm gonna show them. So we're gonna start off probably inside their house here. So this is that raised deck area. I want them to kind of understand the perspective and the visual areas they're gonna get from inside the house. So if they're sitting up here, of course I wanted to move the waterfall further away. If I brought that waterfall too close, then they would literally like stand up at the window in order to see the waterfall. So I pulled the waterfall a little further away. I also pulled the pond further away from the house. So when sitting in her office, which I believe is right over here, she can see the waterfall and still see the pond. We've got the really cool area. So as they come down this staircase here, they'll come down to this patio and it's gonna hang right over the pond with this deep area right next to the edge. They're gonna see across the pond, this fire pit area, but not really know how to get to it. So this is the stepping stones that lead to that pathway, which will be hidden by strategic landscape. Some of the soil actually from the pond will go over here to create a little bit of a berm in this space. The rest of the soil will go over here to create a massive berm. I really want the backyard to have this more golf course, rolling hills type look. So this is gonna be one of my favorite parts, but their favorite part or your favorite part is gonna be this beach right over in here. So I've got a beach designed in on this side and designed in on this side. And I want this beach to kind of carry through this whole space so the grandchildren can kind of come out here, get right next to the waterfalls. We'll put some little boulders out here that stick above the water level where they can sit on some rocks. And remember, we put in these jets, not just to deter the heron so the heron can't see through the water, but also for the kids to play with. So I want this to be kind of this like splash paddy fun space for the kids to hang out in. And then this is the area where the koi and the adults kind of hang out. Wish me luck. We're going to go Friday morning. So I've got a couple days. Today's Wednesday. I show them this one and then tell you guys the results. So stay tuned. We'll see what they say. Hey there. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? What do I owe the pleasure? I wanted to give you an update on the silica sand yeah. um, product you had me looking into. Yes. Um, I did reach out to the company down like four hours away uh -huh. that you were hoping we could go to and just pick up something. They unfortunately do not do anything like that. They only ship like freight and truckload out of that plant. Um, we'd have to find like a local distributor and they'd have to get back to me and then it would be days or weeks before we could get an order. <coughs> well, that sucks. So unfortunately, that will not work out. Let me do this. Let me call Joel from Illinois Brick. Well, he 100% has more resources for that kind of stuff than I do. Um, in the past, he's not really been able to help, but the last time we looked into it was years ago. And I just don't want to use the sand that we've been using in the past because it's just garbage. It turns the beaches into a large litter box, and that's not what we want. So let me call Joel, and then we'll go from there. Okay, great. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. It's about 9.30 Friday morning. I'm pulling up to meet with with our customers out in Sycamore. I'm super excited, worked on that drawing, you know, for, I don't know, it was like an hour and a half. Anyhow, super excited to show them the drawing, see what the reaction is, see what they want to say, at what level do they want to invest in their backyard. More excited to tell you guys how it goes. So hang on tight, we're gonna go inside, we'll figure this out, and uh, I'll be right back, tell you how it went. <laughs> boys what do you think it's double in my education jay what do you think fantastic why learning a lot of new information on large projects calculations and why are calculations fantastic because you need to know those to make the project correct tom it takes the ambiguity out of bidding these projects what has been good about this boys yes. learning numbers. numbers 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 that's a brilliant that's brilliant a person teacher. you're only saying that because you stand here i know 100 <laughs> percent well, the bad news is it's kind of cold. Like, <laughs> like, I think I'm frozen. The good news is she said yes. I'm so excited. This pond is going to be so cool. They went with the bigger pond. It's going to be 48 feet. You get to do the stepping stone bridge. I'm so excited. It's going to be such a cool project. I can't wait to get out here and build it. Unfortunately, it's a few months from now, but that's going to be great. And I know they're going to love it. And I know their grandchildren are going to love it. So super excited about that. I'm going to head back to the office, make sure that things are rolling with that fish tank back there. All right, good news. So I just got off the phone with Joel from Illinois Brick. They do have
have silica sand. Unfortunately, it's not at the Naperville yard that we usually go to, it's down in their bridge view yard. The other thing is, is I'm not 100% sure if it's the silica sand we're looking for. I'm kind of getting an education in silica sand. There's different types. He's got 420, which means really nothing to me, but I'm gonna send Chris Z down there to go get it anyways. We're gonna get a pallet of the stuff. It says it's used for landscape, and I think it's gonna work. Here's what I know. It'll be 100% better than the stuff we've been using. So, see if this is gonna pay off. The suspense, it's gotta be killing you. If it's killing me, it's killing you. I hope. <laughs> It feels so good to actually have something back here. Finish, finish. When I mean finish, finish, we don't have to touch this anymore. It is done. I think JD did such a good job. I love the new design. I love that we have eight compartments instead of six. We've got these much sturdier nets that keep the fish from jumping out. They move up and down effortlessly. Josh, our head maintenance guy, came up with something super creative. Each one of these has an aerator in them. You'd always want to shut the aerators off to see the fish a little bit better. Of course, we wanted to put aerators back in them again, but it was so annoying because you had to shut the aerators off in order to see the fish. So we had to go back, unplug something. We thought about doing like a big master switch. Josh came up with this genius idea. Look at this. Here's the air tube. As I lift the net, the aerator comes out of the water. Oh! And now I can see the fish. And look at how crazy gorgeous they are. The other thing we did is we had this goopy like stand that came out like this. JD came up with an idea. Huh? Look at that. Now I can get right in here, look at the fish, scoop them out. And then the last big thing we did, and you guys all saw this before, is we put these different dividers in. Now if I need more space because I have bigger fish, all I do is grab this handle right here, slide this guy out, and I make two containers, one big container, with the ease of just sliding this thing up and down. So it works so much better. Better home for the fish, way easier to retail the fish. This was a huge win. We liked it so much, we're gonna do the same thing over here. So you can see how we've lowered this side to match that side. We've got our brick in here. We've got our dividers. Slide these things up and down. We're gonna get four compartments. These are all slightly larger. Probably about 50 gallons, 75 gallons larger than each one of these. So we're gonna put bigger, more expensive fish on this side. And now we can turn this into a more retail friendly space over here rather than hovering over on your tippy toes. <laughs> so the guys are working on this. I would love to say this is gonna be finished next week. There's no way, but we're making huge, huge progress. One of the big things we wanted to do is get our intake bay slash skimmer from out and underneath that deck, which made it really difficult to maintain, and put it up here where it makes it easier for our retail store staff to maintain. If you look over here, you'll get a much better idea how this is going to work. We're going to have a liner draped in here. These bulkhead fittings go on here, liner back inside here. Water is just going to get pulled into this space because our pumps are sitting down in here. The pumps that sit in here are going to push water through these pipes and over to big wetland filters that are going to sit on the other side. The reason we're not gonna be able to finish this thing probably this week, because we're still waiting for those self-contained systems, which I can't wait to show you guys, because building a wetland filter inside of a self-contained tub is gonna be a new experience for me, which means it's 100% a new experience for you guys. And the last thing I wanna show you the guys did is right behind this corner. Ta-da! Look what's happened. All of this was solid racking and shelving. It just freed up all of this space. So now Ed, who's got some master plan for doing some big filters, back in here has 12 feet by about 18 feet to play with in here so hopefully this is enough to create the filter system we need for back there but at some point we're gonna have to get the brain on ed back over here to share with you guys what we're gonna do hey brian the sand came in so you guys let's go check this out and open it up together come on <laughs> all right come over to my lab slash kitchen. So I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, as I saw Jack carry this in and I saw the sand, it's like if you've ever picked up a bag of sugar and you see the, a little bit of that falling out, that's what it looked like to me. So it's silica sand, but I think it's gonna be more like sugar sand. Let's take a look. It's a little white. 
Oh, it feels so nice though. Yes, this is actually some really cool stuff, but I don't think this is what I need. So we have 1,600 pounds <laughs> for 20 silica sand, and I'm not sure what we're gonna do with right now, but oh my gosh, when you touch it, it's like touching air. This is like, this isn't Cabo sand, this is like Bahama sand. Really, really light stuff. The reason I don't wanna use this in our pond is this is gonna migrate all over the place. This is nice though, like this is kind of the advantage of working at my lab slash kitchen. We can do some different things here. Now look at this, if I mix this with the water, see how clear the water still comes out? That's awesome. Look at how clear that water is. Not rinsed or washed or anything. You saw me pull it right out of here. Now, I've gone outside and grabbed a couple cups of our old sand. God, it, it would be cool to do a beach out of that. Now my brain's spinning, trying to figure out how we do it. But this is right from our pond. <laughs> Nothing about that says tropical or backyard oasis. Nothing. <laughs> like, I'm gonna touch it for you even though I don't want to. I have a weak, oh God. It's just like, it's more like potting clay. It's so weird. No, yes, maybe. <laughs> I guess this, guys. Hey, stay tuned to figure out what we do with 1,600 pounds of silica sand. Now the suspense has really gotta be killing you. <laughs> so we have our wins, we have our losses, right? The big part of aquascape construction is all about the R&D. We're constantly out there field testing, field testing, field testing, making sure you guys don't have to go through all the same mistakes we've gone through in the past. This, I can't tell if this is exciting for me or not. I really love the way it feels in my hand. I love that the water is staying crystal clear when I mix it in, but we'll see if we use this. And I think I have a pretty good idea where I want to put it here at Aquascape. Like I'm still actually genuinely excited. So fun week, sand was a huge hit, maybe a huge loss. It seems like a month ago that we started this week's video. When we think back, it's really the day in the life. Next week, you guys stay tuned because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for you. We're gonna get out of cold Chicago. We're gonna take you to Spain. Yep, we've been working on a project in Spain. In fact, Mr. Hansen is out there right now just buttoning things up. I was out there for 19 days building a pond with Jack Harju from Atlantis Water Gardens, Ralph Bizad from Pondscapes AZ, myself and Chris. You guys tune in next week. Check out the awesome project we're doing out in Spain and tell all your friends. Don't forget and please comment. Let us know what we did right this week, what we could do better, and we'll do it again next week. Bye.